When it comes to vacant and dilapidated housing in Cleveland Heights, we've been mad as hell for years. Tony Kuda joins us in our justified anger and discusses the issue on the podcast with Mike Riley. Stay tuned. I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. I want you to get up right now. This is the Cleveland Real Estate Investor Podcast with Mike Riley. Today, we are joined by Tony Kuda, who is running for council in Cleveland Heights, Ohio. He shares our passion for addressing the housing issues in the city and discusses it today with us on the podcast. But first, a word from our sponsor. If you've been listening to this podcast, then you understand or should understand the pitfalls of investing in Cleveland real estate. Say you're looking for an investment property to rent, and these are the things that could happen and often do. You overpay for a house and it's in the ghetto. Then you find that it's a money pit with endless surprise repairs. Your hapless property manager, who may be the brother-in-law of the realtor, gets a tenant who after three months stops paying the rent. Then the toilet explodes and you have nobody to repair it because guess what? The property manager is not answering the phone. Yep, that's the ugly side of the Cleveland real estate market. But we have a solution. Buy one of our properties. It's been inspected. It's been vetted. It's in a rock solid part of town. It comes with a gold star tenant paying top dollar rent. And we manage it. Call us at 216-371-8160 if you're interested. Hi, everybody. We got a quick impromptu podcast. We got a very good friend of ours, Tony Kuda, who's running for council of Cleveland Heights. He's part of the revolution that is coming in the Cleveland Heights area with the new mayor. So, Tony, good morning, and thank you for taking time out of your busy, busy day. Good morning. All right. Hey, Tony, we were talking just earlier about you're walking around, passing out, you know, flyers, being the candidate just busting your ass and you're just seeing what I've been seeing for the last 10, 15 years in Cleveland Heights. You want to recount your travels with Tony? Yeah. So there's, there's one thing about going door to door. When you walk up to the houses, you really get to see what it looks like. There's something about driving, you know, you kind of don't really look, you know, you know, you obviously should look where you're going and that, you know, examine the houses. But when you're when you're walking door to door, you really get to see them up close. And, and walking around the high school, I think it was, I'd say it was about 10 days ago. You know, I noticed that that practically uh, all the houses uh, on Washington and Goodnor were in, in, in rough shape. I wouldn't say all of them, but a good deal of them. And then I came across one house on Goodnor that was in really bad shape. It had a notice post on it and it uh, posted on it. It was, uh, you know, windows broken in the front and, you know, obviously animals could get in there. I mean, the house was vacant. There was a notice posted to, you know, looking for the landlord. If you own this house, we need you to contact us. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to wonder how, hey, why these- don't you, why don't you send a message in the bottle? Yeah. <laughs> that, or a smoke or how, about a carry, how about a carrier pigeon? Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it brings up, you know, all the things that we really need to do as a city. You know, it, it really it really doesn't pay to get angry. You really just got to get determined to fix the problem. You know, we, okay. we have all right. to- let's. All right. All right. Let's, okay, cowboy, slow down okay. here, because I've right. only been dealing with this for over 10 years. Well, I know. Um, I'm not informing so you. I'm just I know. I'm no, just no, trying to get I wanna, to- just, I want to inform our listeners. Sure. Those who who follow the Cleveland Real Estate Investor Podcast, why this is all relevant to you. And of course, to people that want to support Tony for counsel, which I, I am, why this is so important. Let me tell you something. First of all, housing is, is the key to Cleveland Heights. Taking care of these houses, like almost Marshall, Marshall Planet, where this is the number one thing we are focusing, focusing on. Now, from investors in Cleveland Heights, you should be excited about 
what's going on in Cleveland Heights in the next couple of months, because with a mayor and with some new people on coming in on council, there's going to be fresh eyes on this longstanding problem, which for ever since the housing crash in 08 has been pretty much dismissed. They're the reason why there is a housing, a vacant housing problem in Cleveland Heights is because nobody makes it a priority. Instead, they work, they work around the edges. And those that have listened to my podcast have heard me for the last year, every now and then have an episode where I'm just so frustrated. But housing impacts retail. It impacts crime. It impacts financing our schools, and it impacts just the general aura of what Cleveland Heights is. And look at what they're doing in Lakewood. Lakewood probably has two dozen vacant houses, because as soon as these houses raise their ugly head, they get whacked by, by the Lakewood Housing Department. Cleveland Heights has a thousand Think about it, a thousand vacant homes. And so me over at Lakewood, those people that are lucky enough to buy in Lakewood, property values are exploding. It's not exploding in Cleveland Heights. Go ahead. Let me flip the ball to you, Tony. Run with it. Yeah. You know, uh, we're an inner ring suburb. Uh, you know, a lot of our houses are 100 years old. Obviously, the vitality of any community is their housing stock, and it is, and it is ours. You know, the problem is, is, is if you've just laid out, Mike, that uh, you know there are way too many houses in in bad shape, and and it's just taking too long to do anything about it. You know, we we're nibbling around the edges, so you know we we need to identify and prioritize the worst houses. You know, we need to do as large a number as we can. We need to staff up our housing department. We're down six people. Our housing code. Can you believe that? We're actually laying people off in the housing department. I mean, it's staggering. Not laying them off. People have been fired. A couple people have quit, but it's We're going on a couple of years now where these vacancies have been lingering. And four of the vacancies are, our housing inspectors. And obviously that's, that hurts big time, but we, you know, we have not done a major overhaul of our housing code in 38 years. You know, we, you know, Mike always talks about nuisance abatement, which is something, you know, we, it's a tool we have and we, we don't use it. We certainly don't use it effectively and, and on the scope that we need it. And everybody knows what to, everybody knows what the problem is. Everybody knows what to do, but we're not doing it. And that's what the mandate is for the new council, because it's five seats are up on November 2nd. And for the mayor, you know, uh, again, that's November 2nd, the election. So, you know, it's not just a matter of getting new people in there. It's a matter of getting results. And you get results by having a plan and a timeline and executing it. Um, We already have a report that was done by a consultant, Mike's favorite, uh, thing that <laughs> does is hire consultants, but we already have the report that, you know, it lays out 18 steps. It, you know, they're, they're common sense, but you know, okay, we paid for it. Now let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's hey, execute. You know what, Tony, I've been down yeah. this road so many times. Yeah. It's like groundhog day. Yeah. It really is groundhog day because you know what, look at, we don't need another effing plan. Okay. I don't need to have people saying, well, this is a tough problem. OK, uh, we or I don't need somebody saying I love Cleveland Heights and we got to do something about it. OK, don't anybody don't anybody comment on this problem in order for the problem to be solved. It has to be something every day. People in, who work in Cleveland Heights in the city government need to say, what did we do today about housing? That's the level of priority. Now, you know, I can tell you this, Mike, your your message has uh, permeated this election. I hear the other candidates talking about it, including the mayoral candidates as a priority. And, you know, that's that's the first step. It's got to be on the radar of the politicians that are 
uh, empowered to do something about it. But, you know, people, you know, obviously after the election, you know, the voters got to stay on us. I mean, that's 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 the way this works. You no, know, don't you let can't. Our... You as a city council person and the mayor can't be co-opted on this because well, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, people said to me, you know, the good government types a couple of years ago when I helped you and your group. Yeah. Uh, supported your action to put a mayor on the ballot. All my good government people were appalled at why I was in for a mayor. And you know what was common about every one of them? They didn't live in a neighborhood that had bad housing. They were up there in their ivory towers. Yeah. Talking about bullshit like sustainability or um, bike paths or we've got to develop retail. I mean, you know what? Uh, or we've got to support our schools. You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, at the end of the day, there is a rot, rotted weeds all over parts of Cleveland Heights. And those are the vacant houses. Those are the houses where you have landlords who basically put some you know, whoever they can get in there. And meanwhile, the garbage piles up. But it, what has always been astounding to me is that you can make housing self-sustaining by simply fining people, going around with a violation and just fine them $100, $200. You got a landlord who consistently is not picking up the trash, who's not cutting where, you know, it's, it's, it's in violation of certain ordinance, just find them like, yeah. like you would do like the police do when they run these traffic, uh, these speeding traps. And trust me. Uh, and you know what? These bank owned properties that just sit there, that just sit there. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking $5,000 fine. And then Levy the fine, go to J.J. Costello, who's the judge, and say, foreclose on this. And then it goes on to the assembly line to all these investors, like people that are listening to this podcast, let them buy the house and fix it up. Well, Meanwhile, you're, you're, exactly, all- you're exactly right. This is a concerted effort by all three branches of government, if, you really want, if you're really serious about this. The, the council needs to change, to, to, needs to update the housing code and vote for a budget that truly prioritizes the plan in place to attack these thousand vacant and abandoned houses. That's, that's got, and look, when you do that, you are automatically saying, or at least implying, that you, you're, we're going to have to, you know, some other things are going to have to wait. You know, when you prioritize, you know, <laughs> I mean, our budget is X. It's not an infinity sign. So we're right. going to have to take money and move it over. I won't vote for a budget. Listen to me. I will not vote for a budget that does not make housing a priority. I won't do it. But that's something that all council people have to do. But it's not it's not just a threat. I think everybody's on board with with doing the right thing. Uh, the housing code. You know, it, it, it has to be updated. The administration, the new mayor and the housing director and, you know, the city administrator have to carry out these laws. And then if the laws are broken, yes, the housing court judge, J.J. Costello, has to, you know, you can't just do continuation, continuations. At some point, you have to let people know this is serious business. You know, and, and frankly, I don't think we're going to prioritize, you know, mom and pop who are on Social Security, uh, who, who are in their homes and are having trouble keeping their properties up. Exactly. In, exactly. in comparison to investor owned properties that are, you know, been vacant for five or 10 years. I mean, you know, there's a big, a big difference between two people who've owned their home for 30, 40 years and are just happen to be struggling now and somebody who's left the property vacant. And by the way, all those things, Mike, that you said are, you know, these problems that are solved 
by attacking the housing problem. And you're talking about the blight of the neighborhood, you, you know, attracting businesses, you know, no business, no, but no investor, no business investor wants to uh, put their business near a neighborhood that they think is going downhill. Crime, you know, pe- people, oh, that, yeah, exactly. people that are law abiding citizens are attracted to well-maintained safe neighborhoods. They're not attracted to lawless, run-down neighborhoods. And you're right. And lastly, the taxes, high taxes. When I go door to door, I hear more about that than anything else. Believe it or not, more about that than even housing. And I would say this, if you if you take those hundreds, possibly a thousand vacant and abandoned homes and put people in them, taxpayers, homeowners in them, my God, I mean, our tax base expands to the point where hopefully, you know, the schools don't have to come back to us every two or three years and raise our property. Yeah, it's very, you know, it's a very dysfunctional situation in Cleveland Heights because all you got to do is do the math. If you have a thousand vacant homes times $4,000 average property taxes, that's $4 million. And that doesn't even include the, the appreciation of the housing stock that surrounds those vacant houses. Absolutely. I mean, really, think about that. I think about the impact of yeah, just I mean, emphasizing on, on, on vacant yeah. house, housing. And I mean, the, the lawn's being cut now. You know, taxes are being paid. You, you, you know, you can go to Zillow the next day and, and watch your property values go up. I mean, it's it's really just, you know, you, you hate to say one thing could solve all our problems, you know, but I have to tell you, this one thing could go the longest way of any of the problems that Cleveland Heights has. And listen, we're not unique uh, in the United States, uh, you know, entering suburbs, all have, you know, the the... The, the usual problems, you know, poverty. And- no, 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 Tony, we are unique. We are, we are, unfortunately, we're very unique because all you got to do is look at Lakewood. All you got to do is look at Youngstown when they pass the mortgage bond. Yeah. All you got to do is look at a lot of inner ring suburbs. Well, I would, will I would see, agree with you. You this- will see, no, no, let me finish. You will okay. see we are very unique because we don't do anything about housing. These other, these other inner ring sing, suburbs are doing something about housing. And, no, and maybe, right. it's the, it, maybe it's the peculiar combination of a very well-educated population close to the orchestra, close to case, medical. Uh, everybody is, I mean, the, the 10,000 or the 5,000 people that make up the, um, the people that vote for, you know, council and stuff like that. They are so, they follow government to the T and yet they don't see the problem right in front of them. I mean, I sat in a master, uh, master plan meeting five years ago. This is one of my favorite stories. You've heard this story, I think, Tony. Okay. And boy, you had everybody who had an advanced degree in housing planning there, urban planning. And I mean, it was like a, a, a comic con convention. They're all walking around with their charts, their rivers, their bike paths, their roads, proposed retail. I mean, it looked like Epcot, you know, the way it was all yeah, kind of laid yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Not one thing on housing, not one thing. Yeah. It was you know, Mike- comical. If you have any questions for us or topics you want to discuss or even just want to say hi, you can email us at the Cleveland Real Estate Investor at gmail.com. You know, I'm not going to do a psychological evaluation of this. <laughs> I will tell you this, that identifying a problem is easy and getting results is, is you know, the part where you roll up your sleeves and you work day to day tirelessly you know with with fierce dedication 
un, un, until, you know, and, and you never really get to spike the ball. You know, there's always, there's always something else that needs to be done, but you're absolutely right. There are other ring, other inner ring suburbs doing a lot better than us. And it's because they are attacking the problem head on and getting results. And we're not attacking the problem head on and we're not getting results. And I, I, I have to yield to your wisdom on this. Because uh, I just, you know, I guess in my own way, I'm just trying to say this is a solvable problem. And uh, it's not about talking about uh, housing being a priority, but acting on the components that, that need to be in place to get the job done. You know, right now, Future Heights is doing six or seven houses a year. But the scope of the problem is a lot bigger than that. We'll never catch up at that rate. We know what right. we, have. we had a we had a nice talk about six eight months ago with uh, some person from Future Heights, but six or eight homes is spitting in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what is that? How is that solving the problem? And well, a lot we, of times, we know we have to do more. We know we right, have to. Right, but do you more. know what? But everybody has to ask themselves a fundamental question: Am I part of the solution or am I part of the problem? Because if you're, if you're not part of the mob that goes to City Hall and say, what is getting done with housing? You are part of the problem. And you don't even know it. That, that, I'm sorry. You're running for office. You don't want to alienate anybody. Whatever. I get that. I'm more kind of like, I've had it. Yeah. You know what? I'm sick and tired of just listening to this endless stream of conversations that just go nowhere. It's dead end. And you well, know what? It's the single, I, I, I've been meaning to throw this thing out there. Yeah. The single biggest complaint of customers through our contracting business in Cleveland Heights, the single biggest complaint about housing, when you talk to a homeowner on a street who's got to live next to this, this dump for years, they don't know who to call. They yeah. don't know who to call. Yeah. And, and that, if you had a call center set up, and you can use one of our Filipino virtual assistants, I could set this up in three weeks for the city. Just sub it all out. Person can call, talk to one of our nice, friendly Filipino virtual assistants, they will take the call, they will get back to them and say, Mrs. Jones, this house, this is where it is. And you know what, you know what people are going to, you know what people are going to find when they start doing a breakdown of these thousand homes? We're not talking about a lot of elderly in there that don't have the means to fix them up. We are talking about a dysfunctional relationship between the county and the city where the mm -hmm. county continues to put property taxes on because they don't know it's vacant. So the county is the single biggest source of these problems. And somebody, if I'm mayor, if I'm Khalil or Barbara, who is mayor, the first thing I'm do is get on channel three and, and say, I'm going down to, to the Cuyahoga County Commissioner and I'm gonna tell them, Get off my back. Help me solve this problem. Okay? Write off these property loans. Now this property, instead of, it's now people, get out your pencils for this one. You have houses that the true value of these houses is probably $10,000. Because yeah. anybody who goes in, anybody who goes in, and like me, an investor who wants to fix it up and flip it, to a owner occupied has to put in probably a hundred thousand dollars to get it to its valuation of 125,000. Okay. Now imagine if there's $50,000 in back property taxes. Okay. Yeah. Over the last five years, six years, seven years, this house has been vacant and it's getting yeah. worse every year. And yet the County keeps piling on property taxes. And that is what prevents these houses from going to market. Well, if it goes to the land bank, the property taxes get erased. And obviously the theory is that, uh, you know, we're, we're all better off 
if we just forgive the pro- the property taxes from the previous owner and and make the make the house you know viable for the market and viable for somebody like you who's you know investing your hard earned dough into the you know into the property to get it into shape to sell it and and look you know i i think that that's a fair argument that you know if we're never going to get a nickel out of the person anyway and the house is just sitting there running down the neighborhood Maybe the land bank coming in could be the best option. Hey, you know what? The land bank, I like the people. I worked with the land bank. The land bank's a joke. All right. Look, you got a thousand homes yeah. in Cleveland Heights that are vacant. You got a thousand. There's nobody home at about 800 of these homes. Nobody. Right. And the county keeps piling on. The land bank, if they're lucky, it'll take five years to work through just the Cleveland Heights inventory of vacant houses. And meanwhile, by the time they get to it, it's ready for the, uh, to be demolished. So land bank bullshit. It's not going to solve the problem. Instead, we could have those 800 homes out of a thousand quickly, quickly gobbled up by investors, first time home buyers, et cetera, et cetera. If we would just tell the County to let it go, let these property taxes go. Sell these properties to five thousand for five thousand dollars to an investor, and then make sure that they're on the hook to do it right. Because if they don't do it right, if they don't get this house fixed up in three months, guess what? They lose the house. Yeah, okay? I mean laws- that's the other part of the problem. You've got these LLCs coming in. Yeah, don't know what they're doing. They're playing big time real estate mogul and they don't have two nickels to scratch together. They get a hard money loan to fix up a house. They start fixing it up and then they walk away to jump on another property. Yep. Okay. Believe me. Hey, everybody, everybody, I'll end on this note. Then final thoughts from you, Tony, because I know you got to go back out campaigning. Yep. This problem is fixable. It is so easy to fix. I don't want to hear anybody say, well, what about this? What about that? Focus on solutions. Put together a a simple roadmap that says in six months, 800 of those thousand homes are going to be fixed. Okay. You know what? I I can't, I can't add anything to that. I mean, we, we know exactly (laughs) what to do. Really. We, we know what to do. We have the tools to do it. It it is, you know, we have to move some money around, but that's, as you said, that all that is doable. Um, Hey, Tony, it's, it, it finances itself. The city takes a cut. It it does. It's just that it's going to take some upfront money just to get, you know, all the, the inspections and, and get these houses teed up for, uh, you know, an investor to come in and do this. You know, you just, you, you know, you have to, we're going to have to change a couple of laws, you know, and modernize our code. And, and you know, so we have the powers that we need to, to get this job done. But all of this is doable. And your idea about a call center you know, these are some of the things I'd like to talk about during the transition. If I'm fortunate enough to be elected on November 2nd, uh, between November 2nd and the time we're sworn in, which is uh, January 2nd, you know, that would be the time to get all this in place. What I want is I want day one of this new administration and the new council to be something where people say, ah, I can see a difference in the way this city is run. Right now, because in right. that two month interim period, we're ready to show people there's a new sheriff in town and there's a new council working together with that sheriff to get this housing job, uh, housing problem solved. And, and I do think and, we'll do it. Yeah. Right. And city and city hall and council are the mayors. Really, can we have 95 percent of what you're talking about relevant to the bulk of the population? It, it, okay. It, it, uh, you know what? I, get very so tired. I mean, come on. I don't, you know what? We should put a moratorium on resolutions about social justice. Mike, Mike think uh, about re- this. Resolutions about a nuclear free zone. Please. Okay. Have, You've got people. Had, 
it, we, we have not had, we, the people of Cleveland Heights, have not had anybody in that building, City Hall at Severance Town Center, we have not had anybody in that building during the day that we put there in 100 years. This is going to be the first time there's somebody that we put, we voted to put in there. So we, we're, we should be ready to demand and, and ask for results and then demand them if we don't get them because anybody who gets elected right now has housing on their platform. You can go to Khalil's website. You can go to Barbara's website. You can go to my website. And I, I would imagine, I, I don't know every one of the council candidates because there's, you know, there's 13 of them. But, you know, I would imagine you go to, to any of them and you're going to see housing as a priority. You know, of course, without results, that's going to be an empty slogan. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I get a flyer from somebody running for council. If the first words out of their mouth is I love Cleveland Heights, it goes right in the garbage can. <laughs> you know, what? Least- like you said, that's my that's my favorite joke. And we've been spending way too much Wait, you know, I go on and on about social justice in Cleveland Heights. Hey, folks, I voted for Biden. I hate Trump. OK, so let me get my bona fides uh, out there. But social justice, you know, social justice begins with you taking a walk over to some black lady grandma there who's in her house, who's taking immaculate care of her house. You've seen these houses. They got the bricks surrounding carefully planted Uh, flowers. And then across the street, you've got this vacant house that sat there for five years where you got people squatting. How about some social justice for them? How about making, making it relevant for them instead of a wine and cheese party where we talk about social justice in the abstract? That is what really tees me off. So well, there's, there's um, no question that the safe, well-maintained neighborhoods should be that's table stakes for every community. It should be for ours and we should deliver on it. And, um, you know, we got six weeks, uh, six weeks left. And then and then we roll up our sleeves. You know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, November 3rd, the day after the election is the day we start working on getting prepared for day one in office. And, you know, not 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 January 2nd, but November 3rd is, you know, that's the key date. You know, we transition our government so that we're ready to serve on. And, uh, you know, the plan is is in place and we just start getting results. I understand there's a mandate for change. Nobody is going to complain if we move too fast. Nobody. Yeah. And you know what, Tony, you, everybody talks about, well, you know, mm. the money, the money, the money. You put a bond out that says all this money is going to clean up the housing problem in Cleveland Heights. You're going to get 90 percent. We're going to be able to we're, we're, we're going to be, again, just prioritizing our budget. We don't need more money. We just need to put our money where we say our priorities are. That's all we need yeah. to do, you know. Anyway, thank you so much All for right, having Tony, me. This is always a pleasure. Support Tony Cuda. Support Tony Cuda. Send money to the Barracuda. He's going to eat these houses up when he, when he uh, gets on city council. Tony, thanks for your time. And uh, we'll p- put, put this on your Facebook. All right. All talk right. to you soon, Mike. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Cleveland Real Estate Investor Podcast. You can find all our episodes at www.riley-properties.com or you can find us on your favorite streaming services like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, and more.